Hello, this is Ron with the radiologictechnologist.com blog and YouTube channel. I have a, uh, another question from someone off my website and uh, Mike check, Mike's good. Um, good morning. So just getting started. This, this person says, I came across your page while searching through Google and I loved it. Your honest advice has been very helpful. So thank you for that. Um, I recently graduated from a certain university this past May and I'm actually switching my career from business to radiology. I was wondering which jobs you recommend I apply to while attending school. I am currently an accounts receivable specialist and work part-time at In-N-Out. However, I want to find a job that will provide me with more health field experience and exposure. I would love to hear what worked for you while you were in school and any recommendations you may have for me. Thanks for your time. Great questions. So we're gonna get started on that. Um, I think first and foremost, what I would say is the best job, if you have to work while you're going to school, the best job is a job that will work around your school hours. Um, Cause you're, look, you're looking for multiple things. You're, you're looking for what I just said, a job that, that works around your schedule cause it's gonna be varied throughout school. Um, but you also want healthcare experience. So. If you can't get a healthcare experience type job that works around your schedule, you're gonna to have to stick with something else because um, what's gonna be most critical is being able to work off hours. So what, what did I do? You said, what worked for me? When I got into x-ray school, I was a phlebotomist and I was working at a hospital in the Phoenix metropolitan area. It was one of the banners. Um, it, was a, it was desert at the time. Desert Sam actually was the hospital, Desert Samaritan. And I was a phlebotomist in the lab and I liked working in the lab um, because it's very similar to radiology in a way. What, what appealed to me all around, and I won't get too far off track here, but what appealed to me um, is solving the problem of what's wrong with this, this patient, this particular problem set as the patient. I originally tried accounting because I wanted to try and solve the, that problem, but <laughs> no thanks. Um, labs, you know, when a doctor sees a patient that has a problem, um, they almost always order labs and most often order a radiology exam. And that's two of their, two, uh, I think, you know, the third key component is their physical examination um, and, and history. But without lab and radiology, you're, you're really missing a big part of the puzzle. And that's what's so cool about those two departments. So I was working in the lab as a phlebotomist and I was working at Desert Sam, which uh, I think I was just working a day shift. I decided to apply for x-ray school. And when I got in, I switched to a job in the same hospital that was called, I think it was either called, it was like a HUC, H-U-C, that was health unit coordinator. Uh, but it had like three different names and really all you were was like a, an MA, a medical assistant to the ICU. Um, a huck typically is the person that sits at the desk and stuffs the chart and takes the phone calls and gets the nurses for the doctors and vice versa and uh, things like that. Um, but where I was at, the huck position um, also rounded on the beds and did uh, glucose checks and, um, you know, little things helped them to the bathroom, whatever, whatever you could do with such a limited scope. Um, but that job had two 16 hour shifts on the weekend of Saturday and Sunday, there were 16 hour shifts. So I could get 32 hours on the weekend, which made me full time. So I got full time benefits, um, but allowed me to go to school and do clinicals Monday through Friday. So that worked for me for a while. And then, um, then I ended up on the floor doing a health unit coordinator uh, position at another job. It was in Chandler, Chandler Regional is what it was called at the time. And that was a night shift job that was, I wanna say it was 7P to 7A. And so again, 312s would get you done for full time, giving you four days to focus on school. So if I did like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, that meant I got off work Monday morning at 7 a.m. and I usually had class starting at 8 a.m. So what I try really hard to do if I had a, a nice um, 
uh, nursing manager that evening was try to get off an hour or two early if I could get all my work done. And for most of the time, they were pretty sympathetic or empathetic because they'd been there. They were nurses and nursing students and, and they understood. And so if I could get off around five, I could go sleep in the car and then go straight to class um, without going home and all that stuff. And that's how I got by for quite a while. But it, it's answering your question of what, what types of jobs should you look for? So in healthcare, you know, there's all kinds of shifts. Um, I mean, you, you name it, you pick any starting and ending times and there's probably a shift for that. Um, in the lab and radiology, for example, there's a shift that goes from like three in the morning till eight in the morning and that's it. It's five hours a day, Monday through Friday. In the lab, those are the people that go get blood from people um, in the early mornings before they have breakfast so they can get fasting blood tests. In x-ray, it's the same thing. You're, you're well, has nothing to do with fasting, but you're going to get chest x-rays on all the patients before the doctors come in and do their morning rounds. The doctors like to come in at whenever they finally get there and they like to see a report on how the patient's doing that day. And so that morning chest x-ray gives them a first glimpse. Um, so if you can find a job that um, will work with your schedule and um, in, in healthcare especially, I would say that there's radiology assistant type positions that let you work in the radiology department and you're just kind of a gopher, a helper, an assistant. Um, that's very similar to transport. Transport is another good opportunity to learn the hospital. In fact, it's probably one of the first jobs I recommend because it's kind of the first step on the career ladder in a hospital. At least it's, it's one ladder, so let's put, put it that way. And uh, transporters um, are very valuable because uh, once you have been there long enough and get to know your job, you know where everything is in the hospital, any department, any patient bed, anything, uh, anywhere. Um, you know what the different units are and you, you get to know the acuity. So you learn that the ICU is where the really sick people are and maybe med surge, you know, not so sick and, and post-surgery and you learn what, um, what the post-surgery units are like in the, in the neonatal NICUs and PICUs. And so transporters, since they have to take patients around all day long uh, and kind of move them from appointment to appointment, if you will, um, you get to know everything, every location in the hospital, what each department kind of is for. Um, and you actually start to pick up what they're doing in those departments. So transporters that take patients from their room on the floor down to x-ray um, for, so say they bring them down for CT, over time, you know, maybe they'll sit there and wait till the patient's done because it only takes five to 10 minutes to do the CT. Makes more sense, in my opinion, for the transporter to wait. Some hospitals don't allow that. You have to wait, they go away and you have to wait for a whole nother transporter to come meet your patient. But um, while the transporter's sitting there, you can watch the exam and you can ask questions if, if they don't mind. And you can kind of learn, okay, now I know a head CT goes in head first and a chest maybe goes in the other way or an abdomen pelvis goes in feet first or whatever, you start learning different aspects. So transporter, and they're always in need in transport. They always have a need for more people because A, it's a stepping stone and people are constantly leaving to go to nursing school or whatever. And B, it's often high school students that are just doing a minimal easy job that's allowing them to work four hours a day or whatever, or weekends or whatever. And then they graduate and move on. So there's a high turnover in transport it's a very valuable department, both to the hospital and in terms of teaching you how a hospital works. Um, I always felt like phlebotomy was very valuable because you learn all the exams that get ordered and why and what they look for and what does it mean. You know, I learned that I, I take a CBC or a complete blood count test and that looks at red blood cell count, white blood cell count, um, all these different factors, eosinophils and all that is a part of the puzzle that helps the doctor figure out what's wrong with his patient. So as far as starting jobs, if you can get into transport or if you can become an aide on one of the floors, like a, a health unit coordinator or, or whatever they're called, um, those don't require any kind of a degree. Um, of course, if you, know, if you just wanna get into the hospital, you can always go into the gift shop or you can volunteer or uh, you can work in the cafeteria or you know, there's, there's lots of other things you can do that are 
um, non-patient related, uh, at least direct care goes. But um, that's what I would recommend. And what else worked for me? So um, I, I continue to do the health unit coordinator thing through x-ray school, but in x-ray school, I got trained on CT. And so when I graduated from x-ray school, I got a job as an x-ray CT tech. And I was able to do that at night when I went back to school for ultrasound. And so again, 312s, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night allowed me to do ultrasound school and clinicals all through the week. So I, I, I don't want to get repetitive. I think you see where I'm going with it. It's got to, you've got to find somebody that's going to work with your schedule and not get all bent out of shape if, if you have to go in and do some makeup clinical hours or, or whatever. And um, those are the two most valuable, if you ask me, in the hospital would be transport in the lab. But the lab's going to require, actually, you know, some of them aren't even requiring school anymore to be a phlebotomist. They train you in the hospital. So I don't know how interested you are on that. If you don't like needles and all that, then it's not for you. But if you're okay with that, and you're going to have to do needle sticks in x-ray school. Um, but if you're okay with that and you have a local hospital that needs um, a phlebotomist and they train at the hospital, you might look into that because even phlebotomy school was only like three months. And um, if I remember right, it paid like 14 bucks an hour or something like that. So it pays pretty decent pay. So I hope this helps. Um, hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe. And uh, if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks. See you later.